In today's video, we are taking a look at this smart reframe function inside the Vincent Resolve Studio. Now, this is a studio function and it's something that you can do manually, but it's quite tedious and I actually really like how it ends up looking when you use this feature. As an example, if you're filming by yourself and you want to have that smooth feeling that someone is following you with the camera, then you can film a little bit larger and then crop in a little bit and tell DaVinci to smart reframe you. And then you can have a shot like this without any help at all. So let's take a look inside DaVinci Resolve on how it actually works. We're inside DaVinci Resolve and all I've done with these clips is that I've just gone into the color page and I've done a quick grade here. I've turned it into Rec. 709, I've applied one of my LUTs and then I've just adjusted the exposure a little bit to make everything look great. But what we're actually working in today is inside the edit page here. So if we take the example of the intro shot that you just saw, this is what it looked like before I did anything with it. As an example, if you're filming by yourself and you want to have that smooth feeling that someone is following you with the camera, then you can film a little bit larger and then crop in a little bit and tell DaVinci to smart reframe you. And then you can have a shot like this without any help at all. Okay, so that was the shot that we were working with in the beginning and it's super easy to reframe it. So what we do is we go in here, we open the expector up here in the side. Let's just make a little bit more space for us to work with here so we can see what we're doing. We open the expector up here in the corner if it's not open already. And to make this function work, that's called smart reframe underneath the transform page here. All you need to do is you need to zoom in a little bit. So I shot the shot quite a lot wider. So I had the opportunity to crop in afterwards. Now to zoom in, let's say we want to do something like 1.3 times here. And then I don't actually need to do anything now because I'm a person in this shot. It's easy to just say object of interest, auto, and then click reframe. And if you just click this, it'll take a few seconds and then you'll see what happens. Now you can see that I am perfectly framed inside. And if you play back the video clip now, you'll see this. As an example, if you're filming by yourself and you want to have that smooth feeling that someone is following you with the camera, then you can film a little bit larger and then crop in a little bit and tell DaVinci to smart reframe you. And then you can have a shot like this without any help at all. Okay, so this example was maybe not the best because what we have here is that it doesn't really follow me for that long. It makes it a little bit easier to see that they're following me, but it still looks a little bit more static. So let's try and reset everything and then just zoom into something like 1.8. Now we would be losing a lot of quality. This is shot in 4K, but as we're zooming in this much, it would work better for a 1080 timeline, for example. But this is all just for demonstration purposes. In a second, we'll look at a vertical timeline as well, where it makes even more sense to have it like this. But let me just show you how it works, no matter what. So now I've just zoomed in one time, 1.8 times, and I'll just click reframe again. And this is what happens. And now we've even cut off the feed, which in this case I like a little bit more. And let's see how it works. As an example, if you're filming by yourself and you want to have that smooth feeling that someone is following you with the camera, then you can film a little bit larger and then crop in a little bit and tell DaVinci to smart reframe you. And then you can have a shot like this without any help at all. All right, so I have another example for you. So if we switch to a vertical timeline instead, I have a vertical timeline prepared already. Now we have the same clip in here. But where I think it really comes into motion here is except if we say let's point to 1.4 times here and say auto reframe. Now because we have a vertical timeline like this, it works even better. So as an example, if you're filming by yourself and you want to have that smooth feeling that someone is following you with the camera, then you can film a little bit larger and then crop in a little bit and tell DaVinci to smart reframe you. And then you can have a shot like this without any help at all. I think that's a pretty cool feature to have, especially for something like vertical, where it doesn't see the sides as much and where you can crop in a little bit better if you're shooting or if you're exporting for 1080p, then it makes even more sense. Now, we also have an example of a gimbal that I was showcasing here. And for this particular example, I've had the best results trying to do it in a vertical timeline. It didn't work as well doing it in a uh, horizontal timeline, but it still works pretty cool here. So let's say that we want to uh, first of all crop in a little bit, or maybe let's just see what the footage is first. So you can see the camera goes pretty much out of frame uh, quite a few times because we're just cropped in in the middle right now. And we could automatically keyframe it back and forth to see if it could make it work better. But another thing that we can also do is find a frame where we have the camera fully in the frame, maybe zoom in a little bit, something like this and then say reference point, make it uh, this little target icon, put that on. And then on the screen here, we can move around and we can resize it as well. So let's try and 
select the camera here and click reframe. It takes a few seconds again and now you can see it moved it a little bit. So now we should be able to see that the camera, at least pretty much all the way through, stays within the frame. So it's easier to have it seen and we can follow it around without actually having to be completely steady or following it completely when we shot it originally. And this is also why it makes sense sometimes to shoot something that is horizontal because this clip is actually a lot wider originally. So you can see this is the clip originally and you can see how it's cropped it out now because we were zooming in and we were reframing it this way. So that was a few tips for you on how you can use the smart reframe. It's just a quick video, but I really think this is a cool feature. Now it doesn't look, of course, exactly the same as panning and following something real time, but it does come pretty damn close. And if you're filming by yourself and you still want that motion, this combined with maybe something like the dynamic zoom is a really cool feature to have. And again, you could probably keyframe these things yourself, but even if we go back and look at the first clip here where we did it, you can even see some wobbling. Let me just turn off the audio. You can even see some wobbling that kind of makes it sell it, sells it like it is shot as a human shooting it and holding it. So it's, I think it's even cooler in that way uh, that you can have that. The only thing is of course the framing that moves a little bit, but for something that you cannot do yourself when you can't get the movement, I think this is pretty damn cool. So with that said, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I hope you can use it yourself. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave them down below. I'm always happy to help and answer as fast as I can. And if there's any other features that you would like me to cover inside DaVinci Resolve or DaVinci Resolve Studio, let me know as well. I'm always happy to look into features if I haven't used them already and make a video on how you can best use them yourself. So with that said, I'll leave you here. And until the next time, take care.